The story of how communities in the Delaware River watershed learned about the threat from perfluorinated compounds, or PFCs, is one of concealment and inaction. The compounds are used in a number of products, including Teflon and firefighting foam. Those uh, chemicals that have the fluorinated carbon uh, tend not to break down. Uh, they tend to be very persistent. The perfluorinated chemicals, where uh, pretty much every carbon uh, in the chain is fluorinated, uh, and uh, maybe fluorinated to the maximum, uh, those chemicals uh, can persist in the environment indefinitely. The substance has been called a likely carcinogen by an EPA advisory panel. PFCs have been linked to a number of health problems, including kidney cancer, testicular cancer, thyroid disease, and high cholesterol. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, high blood pressure in uh, uh, pregnant women, a uh, phenomenon known as preeclampsia, uh, seem to be associated uh, with PFOA. In 2005, the Delaware Riverkeeper Network collected tap water samples from homes around DuPont's Chambers Works plant in Deepwater, New Jersey. The sample showed the presence of PFCs. Well, I think the Delaware Riverkeeper Network uh, picked up where uh, the state government uh, was unwilling to tread for a long time. Spurred on by the results of the Delaware Riverkeeper Network's tests, the New Jersey DEP conducted sampling of water supplies for the chemical in 2009, but refused to release the findings. Facing an Open Public Records Act request from the Delaware Riverkeeper Network for the raw data on the samples, state officials released the results, showing the chemical was in 32 water supplies throughout New Jersey. A lot of times, nonprofits can check and find out things we couldn't. They stayed diligent in um, driving this information to the point where, you know, people took notice in the community and partnered with them to help make sure that um, government, local and statewide, got involved. One sample contained the highest level ever recorded for one type of PFC called PFNA. It was found in a sample for the well that supplies drinking water to the town of Paulsboro along the Delaware River. At public hearings, the residents vented their anger because the information had not been released earlier. Every one of you sitting here know that you knew about this problem long before it came to the Natasha Lavard was a resident of Paulsboro when news of the contamination was released. Was there a sense of urgency in addressing something as fundamental and essential to life as our water, the water con that we consume? Was there a sense of urgency? No, there was no sense of urgency for something that serious. Um, as far as the information being available to the public, not everyone knew what they were looking at and what they were reading. And the people that are charged with the responsibility of protecting and watching, they were asleep at the wheel. The initial impact was like, it was just, it was hard for the community. Everybody took it to heart. Like we didn't really know what to do. How do you, how do you get rid of it? People worried about their babies and their families. And, it was rough on the community. The Solvay Selexis plant is believed to be the source of the contamination. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Tracy Carluccio. I'm with Delaware Riverkeeper Network. Uh, thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, several metric tons of PFNA were emitted yearly at the Solvay facility and it was released through wastewater and through the air. So don't be telling us here tonight that the PFCs that are in other people throughout the United States or throughout New Jersey are similar to what people here in Paulsboro have been exposed to. There is an extraordinarily high exposure. The outcry over the contamination led to the call for action on the part of government. In New Jersey, Governor Christie's administration had not made appointments to the State Drinking Water Quality Institute, a panel that makes recommendations for the safety level for contaminants in drinking water. Perry Cohn, a former member of the Institute, says the Christie administration didn't respect the work of the panel. I think they just listened to industry, and industry convinced them that, that, that they were just uh, uh, mindless bureaucrats uh, coming up with numbers out of the blue. And uh, 
that's completely untrue. Of course, there is no way to uh, defend ourselves in public. And I'm probably the first of us to actually say something on camera. The DWQI had not met in four years until it was reconvened in April 2014. The panel recommended a strict safety limit for PFNA of 13 parts per trillion, but the New Jersey DEP hasn't adopted the standard yet. Paulsboro wasn't alone. PFCs had also been discovered in the drinking water supplies of seven other South Jersey towns and in fish samples taken from the Delaware River. In nearby Woodbury, high levels of PFNA had also been found in the municipal water supply. A plan to sell the town's water utility to a private company was put on hold as town officials worked to address the contamination. Um, that test result um, that you sent me this morning, um, I, I was pregnant in 2008. So I broke down into tears immediately. So um, I think the only thing emergent about anything that we have is that issue in particular. So I hope that that uh, goes to the top of the priority list of figuring out what's going on. And uh, I would like to send it back to him and then possibly him set up a task force to see how we move forward with not only this issue, but with the issue of, of contamination. Two years later, communities in New York and Vermont and towns in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, began discovering another perfluorinated compound in their drinking water, PFOA. In Bucks County, officials believe the source was firefighting foam used at nearby military bases. During several community meetings, residents in Warminster and Horsham say the military and other government agencies did not provide them with answers and have fallen short on protecting public health. Guess what? We're not idiots. After hearing Flint, Michigan's water problems, we're scared to death. I have cancer in my area, okay? A high cancer rate. I have heard it could possibly be the water. Here, we'll bring water to your house. You know what? I don't want to hear that. I want to make sure our water's safe. And coming to a meeting that is so disorganized, it absolutely scares me to think, if this is what they're doing with meetings, how can I be assured and feel safe that they're taking care of the water problems? I had a daughter who's, she was born in 2008, and uh, she was born premature, preeclampsia, low birth weight, one pound. 13 ounces, so that's a huge concern for me. Larry Minkus suffers from bladder cancer. He and his wife now drink bottled water. And the thing that I noticed in some of my early research was we have three times the level of bladder cancer here in Warminster than they have in the United States. And the first thing I heard was, oh, there's a lot of retired people here. We have 10% more retirees than average. We have 300% more bladder cancer than average. And that got my attention, and that started me thinking that perhaps the most likely reason for my bladder cancer has been the PFOAs and the PFOSs. Becky and others are concerned about the long-term impact on residents who were drinking the PFOA-tainted water for years, especially children. Uh, infants drink a lot more water per body weight than adults, and therefore uh, the amount of uh, uh, PFCs taken up and persisting in the blood are going to be a lot higher. I mean, when Lily was a newborn, we were making her bottles with the tap water um, with formula, so it's a little worrisome. In May, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency released a health advisory of 70 parts per trillion for the combined level PFOA and PFOS for long-term exposure in drinking water. The Delaware Riverkeeper Network says the standard is too weak, Perry Cohn and other scientists say the EPA didn't consider several factors in developing the recommendation. EPA has completely avoided the subject of using uh, the blood lead levels <clears throat> in rodents or in humans in terms of how they did their risk assessment. Um, uh, they chose instead to use the standard dosage models. Uh, they claim that there is no particularly uh, good uh, basis for uh, the <clears throat> uh, quantitation of the accumulation of, uh, of uh, PFCs in the blood. Several states have adopted a stricter standard, and in September, the New Jersey Drinking Water Quality Institute recommended the strictest safety level in the country for PFOA in drinking water at 14 parts per trillion. 
Residents in a number of communities still have questions about how much of the chemical they have been exposed to and if they are at risk for future ailments. I think that you know, it would be important uh, for those people <clears throat> and with regard to future studies which may show effects at lower levels that they get their blood tested. I think that uh, government at some level, uh, maybe it's the Department of Defense, uh, should be paying for uh, blood sampling in the area. It's a greater expense for the military to bear. However, I think they owe it to us.